Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. Gordon. <laughs> and it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. Wow. <laughs> wow. You had a good 4th of July, didn't you, Rachel? I mean, let's just say my lashes aren't on. Right. My, my wig's not on. <laughs> I had a decent time. I had a decent time. I uh I got elbowed in my eye. I I saw it. Wait, Can you tell? No, actually. And you pointed to the wrong one. Can you tell? You pointed to the. This is the eye. What Your happened to you? Is swollen right here. You 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 doing too much on the basketball court. They they let you know you don't belong there anymore. That's what that is. I was uh, out there getting it in, <laughs> and um. This is wild kid trying to be like Scotty Barnes. He's, he, this is a wild 20 year old, 25 year old kid that was driving. He was trying to push me. You know, you don't push Big Daddy. I'm bringing the daddy to it. The daddy. And, um, and, uh, no, he, he he elbowed me right away. I felt it. See, the the whole the thing is when I'm in sports, I don't feel pain. Did you see that video of me getting punched in my uh, stomach? Did you see that on Twitter? I have adrenaline. You mean you got punched? Well, we were stomach. boxing. Oh, I was boxing against this guy, and he was hitting me hard to the body. I'm like, that doesn't hurt. And then I started. I'm, I'm like, you really can't hurt me. And so I started letting him hit me to the body, and it didn't hurt. But then. It, you're sore the next day. And like right now, I got elbowed, but that's enough. Uh, after that, just had a fun time yesterday. You know, what did you do, Rachel? I, um, you well, I was in New Orleans this weekend at Essence, which was great. And um, <laughs> I had a good time down there. Hot. I forget how hot New Orleans is in the summer, but yeah, a good time. Stinks. A little stinky. Stinky? A little, little bit. I feel like it always smells in the Bourbon Street, French Quarter. Yeah, a, little stink, a, little, a little stinky. It's not a big thing. It's not a thing. It's a little stinky. Whatever. Um. Anyways, yeah. Had a good time. Saw Janet in concert. Did a little thing for uh -huh. Spotify. Black women uplifting their voices. Met some Thought Warriors, which is always a lot of fun. Um, hmm? You like that. You like I can't wait till we can do a live show. I'm telling you, it's so live. It's so nice to be able to see the people who listen to the podcast and support it. I love meeting y'all. Um, anyways, saw Janet, saw yeah, Jasmine Sullivan, Manny Fresh, Dougie Fresh. Fresh. Who else did it? Patty, Patty LaBelle. Pizza. Yeah, it was a fun time. And then yesterday I went to the uh, Revolve H. Wood party at uh, Nobu. Ooh. <laughs> Stop. So Did you wear all white? It was, it was an all white party. <laughs> Rachie. Um. I, I, I want to get married tonight, but I can't take a knee because I'm wearing all white. <laughs> uh, it's good. Look, let me tell you something. When you were out at the Essence Fest, did you see a lot of niggers? <laughs> no, I didn't see any. <laughs> you didn't? Not a one. Only beautiful black people? Yes, exactly. Yeah. How do you feel about the word nigger? Like, I, I say it to trigger... Sometimes I say it to trigger Ebony. Hold on for a second. I, no, I'm not gonna call her and do it. Like, like I say it to trigger Ebony. She hates it when I hit it with the ER. Yeah, it was jarring, which is why I just said I didn't see any. Not a one. Mm -hmm. Not a one. Also, I did something that I've never done before in my entire life, and I don't know if I'll ever do it again. But you know how I am on airplanes and in airports. Uh -huh. I don't like to be bothered. Right. I sat down and talked to the person next to me the entire flight. 
the and, and what, when the when the uh, pilot goes, uh, we started our descent. We just looked at each other. Shout out to Terrell from the Terrell Show. We had the best conversation ever. That is my new friend. It doesn't count. Why? It doesn't count. Why? Because he has a show. No, but I didn't know that when I started conversation with him. Nah. It was like, oh, I sit down, I'll sit down next to Trevor Noah. Like, oh, no. No, that's you it. Have, you that's have to that's to different. You have to shout out to Terrell from the Terrell show, but you have to talk to like like a, a human that like works I didn't at, know I who know. I was talking to at first. And we I mean life stories, just it was inspiring, it was uplifting, it was funny. It was no, like I, I had a very great time talking to him. So shout out to Zarell. I didn't know. So let me ask you a question. If you sat down and Mary J. Blige was sitting next to you, would you talk to her? I don't think she would talk Not back. Her. Yes, she would. If she en- if she engaged in conversation, because see, I would be like, no, I'm not going to bother Mary. Mary doesn't want to be bothered. If she started talking to me, I would talk back. I think she probably have a lot to get off her chest. Her music suggests that. that she, so just some random know, stranger? Yeah. Just see, you know, think about it. You know, it's 96. <gasps> 95 even. You're on a plane with Mary J. Blige. And she's like, hey, you know, take it off. We're going to New Jersey or something like that. I don't know where you guys are coming from. Maybe you're coming from a weekend in Miami. And Mary J. Blige looks at you and she says, yo, <laughs> it was his lover and his secretary. They were working seven days a week. Had a job when no one else was there. Helping you stay on your feet. It's like 11 years, this nigga. And then you guys heard her, y'all. There's just a form of bond over what's going on in her personal life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All she wants to do is be happy. You ask her a question. She's like, all I really want is to be happy. Stop. 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 (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like you're going to New Orleans. You ask her. You go like, well, like, Mary. Like we, we look, look looking forward to in New Orleans. I'm looking forward to getting crunk up in that dancery. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, oh, How many oh, more of these I, are we gonna oh, do? I, How I many more of these are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's all I, what I'm saying is Mary, Mary. Uh, to me, I felt like Mary would have a lot of different things to to kind of add, and she would talk. I feel like she would definitely talk to you. But here's a point, though. I know you would talk to her. If she talked yeah. to me, I would talk back, of course. Nah. I talk back to anybody who talks to me. Don't make me seem a certain way. <laughs> you just said a second ago that you I, don't talk to the people. I know they want to talk to Rachel Lindsay. If you in, if you speak, I'm going to speak back. I just don't, I don't, I'm not proactive with it. Anyways. We have a new segment. We have a new segment alert, you guys. Well, because we have to get rid of another one. Because we have to get rid of another one. another one. Truly, <laughs> new segment alert Donnie's country problems <laughs> y'all we didn't realize <laughs> that Donnie is up against a lot living in a sundown town in Georgia mm. where, where where things are weird Donnie yeah it is your space right now to just talk to people about some of the country ass problems that you're going through out there in Donnie County, Georgia. I'm I'm not used to this. I'm from Detroit. I'm I'm an urbanite. I'm a city guy. Uh, but I'm also enjoying the the nature aspect of living out here. Or at least I was. I do most of my recordings outside. I go either on my back porch or my front porch and like listen to the birds as I listen to y'all or Bakari or Danielle. And it's like, it's it's a it's a perfect work environment. So I had a Bakari recording right before this. I came outside, said my, my workstation, and I noticed something in my front yard that shouldn't be there. There's like flies and there's like an, a little outline that's not grass. So I get a little closer and it's a rabbit. And But the only reason that I can tell it's a rabbit is because of the head. Everything else about the rabbit is just a mangled mess. And my first reaction is, this is a sign. Somebody put this here. (laughs) Or it could be nature. On my senses, I started thinking of the other things it could be. It could be, I see a lot of owls and some hawks out here. So it could have been prey to a predator. 
but I also have some very hillbilly neighbors. And at the beginning of each, right before we're ramping up for Memorial Day, my neighborhood has like each of the, there are like flags that they put up throughout the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, I'm not the most patriotic and neither is my wife, Janae. Um, so the last year when they first did this, when they first put the flags up, we went out with a ladder and, and took it down. And my, <laughs> the, the neighbor who puts them up. Wait a minute. They put up the Confederate, they put up Confederate <laughs> no, flags or put up American flags? They're American flags, not Confederate. Oh, shit, Donnie. Uh, I mean, I, I don't like, like I, said, I work out here or in my backyard. And from my porch, I can see the flag. And it looks like we put it out there. And I just don't want to look at that every day or every other day. Um, so we took it down, wrapped it up, and put it in our garage. Come September of last year, the Homeowners Association lady came and asked if we had the flag. And uh, I was very, very short with her. I was just like, yeah. And then she's like, oh, uh, can we have it back? And I was like, oh, yeah, of course. And she's like, was there a problem uh, with the flag? And I was just like, no. Then she was like, uh, would you guys rather have like another flag, like uh, Black Lives Matter or a uh, rainbow flag, something like that? And I was like, no. That's what she said? Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <my> <laughs> Janae oh was in the living room listening to me on the porch as this happened. And she was like, you handled that well. You could have engaged her. I I, pro I mean, I just, she was looking, better than me. She was looking for me to, I think she was looking for confrontation and she came to the wrong person. I just shut her down. Short answers. Yes. No. Thank you. Bye. So when I see this rabbit, all those things are going through my mind. I'm like, oh, we just took the flag down a few weeks ago or a few months ago when, whenever Memorial Day was weeks. And uh, I'm like, is this is this my neighbors letting me know that they noticed that the flag wasn't up over the weekend? Or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is this the our neighborhood owl or hawk? I don't know. Uh, I don't I don't know. I think your neighbors Tell them about the snake in the pond. Oh, yeah. Also the snake there. Uh, so as I was coming back from seeing the rabbit carcass, I went to my garage to see uh, if my shovel was going to be carcass. was going to be good enough to get the job done. And I was just trying to figure out what am I going to do with this rabbit. And uh, so the way my front yard works, there's a little pond, and we kind of live on an incline. The little pond has a stream that bleeds into a a bigger pond at the bottom. And as I walked past the little pond, I saw a splash in the pond. And I looked closer and after the water settled, I saw that there was a snake looking right at me. And okay. a water moccasin. Could have been, could have been a cotton mouth. Cotton mouths live here. Uh, this is another animal games. We don't have rattlesnakes, no rattlesnakes in Georgia. Um, but it, yeah, it was something. It probably was a water mo moccasin, which I think is also a cotton mouth. Um, so I go back into the garage and I, I get that shovel that I was going to get with the, the rabbit and the snake is gone. Um, but I know that it's still over there somewhere. So after this recording, I'm going to take care of that rabbit and hopefully I'm going to take care of that snake. And then when we say take care of the snake, what do you mean? You know, take them out, handle them. OK. All right. Couple of people, things here. People get upset about that. Number, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Number, I'm, no, I, I, I have no, edited no, no, control. No, <laughs> no, I no, no. God damn it, Donnie, it. leave it in. Donnie, leave it in because we need to talk about this. Okay, a couple of things. Number one, your neighbors didn't put the dead rabbit. Okay, first <laughs> I believe, of all, I believe they. Did. I don't know. You never. No, know. God damn it, they didn't put the dead rabbit in there. All right, it's not direct they enough. They didn't put the dead rabbit. That's not It'd what have they to did. Be on the porch. Okay? It yeah, they did it's not direct enough like this dead rabbit they didn't put it there all right i don't think i don't think they put it there number one you live first of all my question is you got a stream that bleeds into a pond at your crib you selling dope nigga like what the <laughs> hell like like i'm about to get the fuck out of this place bro like we looking for like i want a three i want a three foot wide hot tub so, and now that, that that would be call it a life. You got a stream in a pond. You got <laughs> snake problems. But you stop complaining and be a good American, first of all. So let's. 
So this this is this is this is my assessment of Donnie's country problems for this time. We'll do another assessment later. Interesting to see what Rachel thinks. Number one, the rabbit. I don't think was put there by your neighbors. You have predators around there. There's a neighborhood owl or whatever. I think the rabbit met its untimely end. Sorry to you, Thumper. I'm sorry to that man. And some people got to it. That's what I think. Number two, the snake. You have a pond. There's no reason to kill the snake. Like, watch out for the snake. You're like my dad. My dad yeah. saw a snake. My dad killed a snake. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, you don't need to kill the snake. Do you have kids? See, my, hold on. I don't. Not yet. But I have dogs. And see, oh, my father-in-law is like your dad. Uh, the first time, this isn't the first time we've seen a snake right there. First time we saw it, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, and my grandma-in-law were in town. And as soon as my father-in-law said it, saw it, he was like, oh, we got to we gotta find you a sharp shovel. You got a sharp shovel? <laughs> and I said, no, I got these uh, I got these long shears that I use for the bushes. And he was like, no, that's not going to cut it. That's not long enough. So and he's, he's from Jacksonville, so he's used to killing mm-hmm. snakes. And uh, we went to Home Depot. Got some snake repellent and got this long shovel. And he just said, she told me to sit back and watch him. And I watched him stab the snake. He he missed, but he attempted <laughs> to get it. <laughs> so I was planning on doing exactly what he did. Uh, but the snake got away from me. I feel like I'm, I'm going to take uh, the advice of somebody who's used to living out here or living down here. And uh, not let the snake live because letting the snake live could end up biting me in the foot or biting my dog Peter in the foot. Can 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 you can't tell you something? Like, Why don't you call call the wildlife and fisheries? Stop! Stop! To, what is wrong with y'all? What? Kill the snake! I don't understand this what? whole thing about keeping the snake alive. Donnie, kill it! I kill would kill snake. it in two seconds. I don't understand this whole we got to keep the snake alive thing. It's survival of the fittest. Kill the snake. Why the snake gotta be? No, why you, the snake no, gotta be alive? No, and Donnie, no, those neighbors no, absolutely no. put that rabbit in your yard, and you need to be on <laughs> your did. p's and q's. You need to be all your p's and this q's. So I would put terrible. up. Yeah. I would put up security cameras. I would be mm-hmm. watching. You sound like you're alone out there. I, I'm telling you, your first go with your instincts, Donnie. Kill yeah. the snake. Protect the house. Better say. First of sorry. all, first of all, number one. If you have a problem with the snake, this is the this is my problem, and this is why I'm glad that mountain lion is wreaking havoc. <laughs> this, 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 is, this is my problem. I'm serious. This is this is my issue. This is why I'm glad that mountain lion is having their re- fucking revenge across the country. I got more mountain lion related content that I'm saving. It's the <laughs> attack of mountain lions. Okay, I'm glad you you saw that video. Somebody said. That. I did see that video. It's fucking hysterical <laughs> on the bike. Like that's hilarious. Like that's hilarious. The mountain lion just tapped him on his shit and went back into the forest. I love it. Um, this is my issue, and I'm being serious about this. It's like I don't think it's fair to kill the snake. The snake been living there. You carried your ass over there. Why can't we find a way to live with the snake? Like, if you don't want the snake around, call the wildlife and fisheries, have them come out there, pick the snake up, put it in the snake, put the snake somewhere else. Don't just kill the snake because it lives. Think about just being killed because you're alive. You're treating the snake like he a nigga. I know how we just walk down oh, the street so we and somebody goes, oh, you're dead. Oh, so we, we're snakes now? That's how, Donnie's, that's how Donnie's treating us. Like, you treat the snake like you just, you just walk down the street. Oh, look, it's a black guy. Boom. Kill him dead. Wow. So you're one of those people that. have that in the show today. You're one of those people that saves bees and all of that. Like, I'm Spiders. I'm just nah. not. Centipedes. Yeah. I'm like, not, oh, let me, let me carry it back outside. Let me put it back. No. I, oh, sorry, boys. I try, to, <laughs> I try to stay out their way. I try to stay out their way. If, if we can't coexist, then we can't coexist. But. At, at this point right now, the snake ain't done you nothing. Just like the people that that you took their flag down ain't do you nothing. They ain't do you nothing. They, that rabbit is not there. You feel so... You, I tell you what, you feel in a way because you took that flag down. And now you're letting your... your whatever feelings you have, because you, you fired off the first salvo. 
<laughs> you fired off the first salvo, and now whatever I'm feelings you have about shot. that, you're, like, you're <laughs> on the edge. <laughs> Donnie, protect yourself. Yep, protect yeah. this house from the snakes and the neighbors. But see, we you know we talked about this before when we were talking about guns and stuff. You're not a gun owner, are you, Donnie? I am. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. Well, what the fuck you fucking around with a fucking shovel if you're going to kill a snake? Blow his fucking top off. Oh, my God. Oh, how we have turn. switched it up. Right. I know. I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is I'm not going to lie, Donnie. It's fucking moronic, dog. I, so I wouldn't kill the snake. I wouldn't kill him. What would you do? I literally wouldn't kill the snake. I, would, I, I, I literally would call the wildlife and fisheries out here and i say, look, there's a snake out here. Can you come get him? Because we got dogs. That's what I would do. But if I was going to kill the snake, I'm not getting close enough with a shovel. He might have, the snake got agility, like a 10 out of 10 agility. What if he get to you? Bite the shit out you. Man, my dad used to come out with his, rest in peace, Pop, come out with a cigarette in his mouth, blow a goddamn snake's head off, go back in the house. Wouldn't even pick him up. He like, I was like, I was like, I'd be like, Dad, can you, are we gonna pick the snake up? He's like, Nah, give the vultures a snack, get the buzzers a snack, get your ass in the house. <laughs> country. Hey. Donnie's country problems. <laughs> um, Donnie, can we count on you to come back to give us an update and everything that's going on? I'll keep y'all in the loop. You will can we? Can sure. we count on you? <laughs> yeah. Also, I want you guys to, uh, I want you guys to, uh, to vote. Does the snake live or die? Okay. I want you guys to vote. Number one, vote on both of Donnie's country problems. Number one, vote on whether or not the snake lives or dies. And secondly, did Donnie's neighbors. My Herschel, my Herschel Walker supporting neighbors. That's it. Oh, did you see? Did Donnie's Herschel walking support (laughs) Herschel walking? Herschel Walker supporting (laughs) neighbors put a dead rabbit in his yard. (laughs) Rachel says, yes. I'm going to go vote. Because I might be the only one who votes for my stuff. Rachel says yes. I say no. Donnie <laughs> seems to think yes. You think they did it? I'm open to that being a possibility. I'm not saying Donnie no. knows. Donnie knows. Donnie knows. Donnie knows. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, a very, very depressing big deal of the day on the other side of this break. Okay. It has happened again. Um, And I made light earlier of our place in society as black Americans. And I do that, guys. I hope you know me well enough now to try to cope. But anybody who was triggered or offended by that joke, um, we are I am sorry, but we are going to leave it in just because I think it's important that if anybody didn't like it for me to take my loans for it. Um, but we move on to a story that's very, very sad. Jalen Walker suffered at least 60 wounds in a fatal police shooting. Akron police police. Chief says, as authorities released body cam footage, a 25-year-old black man suffered at least 60 wounds when police officers fatally shot him last week following a high-speed chase during which the man fired a gun out of the driver's side window, authorities said. Jalen Walker was unarmed at the time he was killed, though a gun was recovered from his car after the shooting, Akron, Ohio, police chief Stephen Malette said at a news conference when police released large portions of the body camera videos from 13 officers who were at the scene, prompting more questions about Jalen Walker's death. Here's some audio from the press conference. Was a gun recovered from Mr. Walker's vehicle at the time of the shooting? He was unarmed. What was going to be a routine traffic stop, which would probably result either in a warning or a citation being issued, turned into a pursuit. As Mr. Walker turned on to um, the entrance ramp to Route 8 and the shot is fired, that changes the nature of the contact. 40 seconds after the initiation of the traffic stop, a half a mile from the location of the traffic stop, you hear the gunshot and then everything else that I've just discovered. I'm going to say this. When an officer makes the most critical decision in his or her life, as a police officer. Doesn't matter where in the country this happens. When they make that most critical decision to point their firearm at another human being and pull the trigger, they've got to be ready to explain why they did what they did. They need to be able to articulate 
what specific threats they were facing, and that goes for every round that goes down the barrel of their gun. And they need to be held to account. So, I'm trying to gather my words right. So, when I heard about this, I was at the concert at Essence Festival and, you know, we're having a good time. You know, Essence is all about celebrating blackness and us and uplifting people. And this is in between sets and we're waiting for Janet. And Al Sharpton gets on stage to encourage people to vote and talk about the importance of that and how, you know, in our place in this country. And then he says, a young man was just shot and killed in Akron, Ohio. And he said, I, I guess some people are they're saying he was shot 60 times, but 90 rounds went. So he said 90 rounds. And it was just, I mean, silence fell over the entire Superdome. And it was just a reminder that even when you try to have a little peace and joy, you're constantly reminded of your place in this country. And then for it to happen as well during America's, and I'm using air quotes here, birthday is also a reminder of our place in this country. And so I, I like tried to put that as much as I could, you know, like I just, I was trying to enjoy the moment, but as soon as I left that, I was in a deep dive of trying to understand what happened, learning that this happened a week ago and we're just now getting the body camera footage. And it's, it's devastating. I mean, I like, there's just so many, I, I, I don't, I don't know what to say anymore. We keep having to do this. This obviously has been continuing. This continues to happen. This is, this one is just brought to light. I'm, I know there are other stories that don't even get media attention, but just the whole way that this went down, the unnecessary killing, the shooting, the amount of bullets that were shot into this young man, not even treating him like he's a human being. I, I just, I, I can't get over it. And I think the other thing too, is that I guess it was, I don't know if it was the police chief or what he talked about the decision to deploy the legal force. And he said that it was consistent with the use of force protocols and officers training. So you mean to tell me that it is okay to fire off 90 rounds and have 60 bullets land into someone's body that's within the protocol and training that can't be okay. And I, I, we, we talk about whether or not we're going to watch these videos or not. And I did end up watching this video and it's, it hurts every single time you see one of these, but I was trying to understand how it all went down. I was never going to make any sense of it. That's not what I was trying to get. I was trying to understand how you felt it was necessary to fire off into this young man that many times. And then the defense from the police saying, oh, we thought he was reaching for something. He was unarmed when they were shooting him and they didn't even render aid before they handcuffed him after they fired 60 bullets into him. I just, I, I can't, it's just so, it's just a reminder of where we, like what we mean, what we mean in this country. Yeah. Um, well said, uh, for me, I, I'm looking at all of the, so all of the, the details in every shooting, um, are different, right? So you have a you have a different set of circumstances, a different set of facts that are unique to each time that this happens. Um, some of them are more egregious than others. Uh, some of them, and that's just a fact. Some of them are um, uh, some of them are um, uh, are easier to understand than others in terms of. Uh, when I say easier to understand, I mean like there's simpler. At A plus B equals C. And then there's some that have, you know, different sort of situations into them. The common um the common thread in all of them to me are two things. Number one, the willingness of police obviously to kill people, uh, to kill black men, is there seems to be absolutely zero hesitation. And I think that's to me what has to be litigated, right? Uh, I watch videos of uh, 
of police interactions that have not risen to the killing point yet to where it's not to the point to where uh, people are uh, going to be shot and killed yet. It's, it's the beginning of them. There's one that actually got flagged and taken down off my Instagram where I watched a police officer from Shelby County, Tennessee. I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast or not. Uh, they were trying to enter a man's home to look for someone, but they oh, didn't yeah. have a, a search warrant, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they had a, a description and a warrant to like get whatever person, but they didn't have a warrant to come into this man's home. And he's mm-hmm. like, yo, get off, my, get off my porch. You know, it's my house. You can't come in. You don't have the right warrant. And the police officer in that situation or the sheriff's officer, sheriff's deputy, should I say, uh, looked to escalate it. Just going to grab the guy. Uh, uh, if his partner was going to grab the guy, move him. And he, the guy's like, he's looking at his partner. He's like, look at your man. Like, look at your man. What happens in that situation is he grabs him. The brother scuffles. After he scuffles, the cop goes, oh, my God. Like, I felt for my life. He pulls out his gun. He kills a man. And then, like, where are we at right now? Um, so I think the, like, I think when we're talking about the cops and firing 90 times and shooting this kid, we have to look at the scenario. And I want to ask everyone if everything the police say is true, is this outcome acceptable to you? No. If, exactly. Sorry. If Jalen fired his, <laughs> yeah. No, so no, no, it's, it's cool. No, if Jalen fired his gun, if he was running, if he was, what, if, if everything that the police say is true, is this outcome acceptable to you? I think the problem with litigating this in society is that's where the disconnect is. There's a group of people that are going to say, yeah, if everything the cops say is true, I'm okay with that outcome because that's one less dangerous thug nigga off the streets. And then you have the rest of people who uh, are interested in, um, are interested in due process in my opinion, and are interested in the police actually protecting and serving and treating Americans like citizens. Because remember, until a court has convicted you of something, you are innocent. Even when you're being pursued, even when you're being arrested, even when, like, be, until you are convicted of something, even when they have your ass in county jail mm-hmm. for what you've been arrested for, you are innocent. So anytime the police kill an assailant, technically they've killed an innocent person. Now, obviously, these things are different. If you see somebody with a gun shooting at someone or a mass shooter, which they managed to take. So in this situation right here, we don't get to litigate what went on with Jalen Walker because he's dead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we don't really get to and we uh, investigating the use of force and everything that has, has has to do with that. Like he's dead. What what too often gets robbed of gentlemen in this position or black men in this position is their ability to tell their side of the story, because now their souls have to echo into eternity, and we don't know, and we're left to pick up the pieces. Uh, I saw a report coming from Vice where the cops were using. Photographs of black men as target practice. I encourage you guys to go out there. They're shooting in the shooting range at the police station and the Jeez. assailants that they see are black. <clears throat> Where was We this? have a lot of problems. Um, I can't remember. Uh, we, we have a lot of problems. Uh, there were 50 people arrested. Overnight protests in Akron. You know where this was at. Um, and we're going to we're going to protest and then, you know, we're going to riot. We're going to get back to normal and we're going to wait for the next one to happen unless there is a critical and structural eye uh, looked at at policing. Once again, I'm calling for the federalization of, uh, um, of policing standards and a police czar to be at the a, a, a federal position created. For a police czar to look at the standards of policing all over the country 
and to have some unified and some uniform code that and standard that officers are held to. Like it's obvious that state and local governments do not have whatever they need to make sure that their offer their officers aren't lethal killers or don't use lethal force when lethal force is not uh not appropriate. So in my opinion, we we have to take this out of their hands. And if not, it's 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 a lucky day whenever someone doesn't get killed by the police in this country. Mm-hmm. It's a it's just luck. It's dumb luck. Uh I don't know much about Jalen Walker's past. I don't know. I, I'm sure every single non later that he might have illicitly got is going to come to light now. He didn't have a criminal history. He didn't have a criminal history. He'd never been arrested before. He had just recently lost his fiance um, in a car wreck. Like this was a kid in the community. There've been family members. There's been a pastor who's spoken out about it. No, like they're not going to be able to do that with him. uh, Until we, until we, and we'll learn more about this situation and, you know, I'm sure we'll both size it to death um, on Twitter and other social medias where we where we have gladiator contests. But uh, and, until there is s- some effort made at a level higher than state and local governments, in my opinion, to set a standard for policing and to really enforce punishment uh, on cops that or react poorly and overreact. We're gonna be. We're gonna continue to have to, to have these type of outcomes. And once again, the George Floyd, um, uh, the George Floyd Violence and Policing Act. Uh, I always call it that. Is that what it's called? The Violence and Policing Justice, Act. Justice, ju- George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. I believe. I think justice it's Justice and I don't, Policing I don't Act. Violence. I don't know why. It's like, why I wasn't gonna, gonna correct you. I was just gonna let you. I was just gonna yeah. let you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we 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 need action. And more than that, we need to, 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 you know what? I'm bullshitting you guys. I don't know what we need. I'm so fucking beat. We got to, we got to talk about uh, uh, July 4th shootings next. I don't know what we need. I, I don't know. Like, I, like I'm, 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 I, I, let me tell you what just happened in that, in that segment. I attempted to give answers. You tried. You tried. I attempted to give answers. I, what I would like to see, I don't know if that's going to fix anything. <laughs> it's so fuck. It's fucked up. It's. It, it, I don't know what's gonna happen, man. I have no fucking clue. You guys are listening to a podcast with a podcaster who can't give you any answers. All I can give you oh. is problems over and over and over again. And all I can tell you is that it, at this point, I looked at this. I didn't even watch this video. I can't do it anymore. I'm like, I, 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 I literally, I can't do it. Like, I can't do it anymore. I didn't watch the body cam. Don't I, watch I, it. I, I knew that Jalen Walker was killed. I knew that it, but I. Like with everything I was going through this weekend, I divorced myself from it. I really couldn't pay that much attention to it. Like I, July Fourth shooting, six dead, Highland Park mass shooting. Robert Bobby Cremo the third identifies person of interest. Six people were killed, dozens under wounded. A gunman opened fire from a fucking rooftop during the July Fourth parade in North Suburban Highland Park on Monday, ten fifteen a.m. Uh, man is in custody now. Robert Cremo the third, Silver Honda Fit, North, uh, North Chicago. I was at the attack. Tried to initiate a traffic stop. He tried to flee. Brief pursuit. Taken to custody without incident. Not shot 50 to 60 times. This nigga killed six people. That's the thing. Police know. <laughs> they know how to take somebody into custody without incident. They know how to do it. It's just a matter of when they're going to do that and when not and who they're going to do that with. Listen, I can't even talk about how I feel about this shooting. It's the same. I, you literally can copy and paste what I just said. I mean, taking the racial aspect out of it for what happened with Jalen Walker. And again, what happened this weekend? This is the country we live in. And it is symbolic. You have black people getting killed. And an in, well, like it's never humane to kill somebody, but just the fact that it was done 60 bullets shot, like executed people, a mass shooting, 
at a parade. People are just trying to en- have some sort of enjoyment. Murdered for like, it's just kids, families. It's just, it, it, it is so symbolic of what this country is. And we don't even have this on the rundown, but you got fucking Texas uh, politicians proposing a bill to have the uh, death penalty for people who have abortions. Like this is literally that that came out this weekend. This is literally the country we live in. Can we can can let's let's take that for a second. That's so hypocritical. It always is. It always is. It's quaint. So let's take that for a second. And let's let's pretend that it's all because of Jesus. Let's pretend that it's the Bible. Let's 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 listen to what is said. And what is said is that it's the Bible. Okay? It's the Bible. Bible, 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 Bible. Okay? We'll come back to this shooting in a second. Let's take that into consideration. The death penalty for having an abortion. I'm tired of living with stupid people. I'm so sick of the dumb. And if you're one of the dumb and you're listening to this, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm one of the dumb. I'm dumb to somebody. So there's somebody that looks at me and says, hey, Van is so dumb that I don't want to share oxygen with him. And you know what? I'm looking at that person and I'm saying, I fucking feel you, dog. I get you. It's the Bible doesn't say thou shall not kill anyone who hasn't done anything. It says don't kill. It says don't kill. So if we're talking about Old Testament gnarliness, which is where we get all this from, it says don't kill. Don't kill. So all of you wackadoos that hate abortion should hate the death penalty just as much if not more because you guys are also fucking freedom freaks and being a freedom freak means that you should be completely against the state having the ability to take your life The state can't tell you that you can't have a tank and weapons grade plutonium and a rocket launcher, but you're telling me that the state can tell you (laughs) when you die? Like, none of this is consistent. It's all about, like, dicks and balls. (laughs) I'm, I'm so dumb, struck. By all of this stuff, it's I, I hear that and it makes me just want to go kick somebody in the ass. Kick them right <laughs> up the hole. The hole. Man. <laughs> I'm so frustrated. I man. appreciate the laugh, <laughs> but I get I totally understand what you're saying. It's not logical. It doesn't make sense. Nothing is consistent. We always talk about the hypocrisy when it comes to these folks. That's the only thing that is consistent is the hypocrisy and the fact that it is illogical. It's not grounded in anything other than personal preference and beliefs, period. That's it. Makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. I called this Robert Cremo, the third guy. I said that the nigga shot six people. I didn't mean black. He's not black. Um, He fled from the cops. He gave himself up. The cops didn't kill him. He killed six people. Two law enforcement officers were shot during the 4th of July festival in, in uh, Philadelphia. Frank security of the 4th of July concert at Benjamin Franklin Parkway when shots were fired around 947, just before the fireworks went off. There have been no arrests so far and no suspects in custody. Police said they're following several leads and asking members of the public to come forward if they have any re- information regarding the shooting or the video capturing What happened? So there's your bad news. Your bad news is that the cops killed another black man, shot him 60 times. They say he might have been being violent, so they had to kill him. The cops ran up on a white dude, 
who killed six people. He ran. Now scratch on. Yeah. I mean. It's like it's tell as old as time. It's the same story every single time. Buffalo shooter taken in without incident. Kyle Rittenhouse taken in without incident. Oh, by the way, y'all stop with y'all conspiracy theories. I don't want to hear them no more. I'm going to start blocking y'all niggas. Which time? Like, just, just the dumb shit. I'm going to start blocking out the dumb shit, man. I'm going to start blocking y'all. Everybody that hits me with the dumb shit is getting blocked. You hit me with all of this shit. Secret societies are controlling this. We have very concrete problems in America. We have a mental health disaster that's been exacerbated by the pandemic. We have a gun culture nightmare. And I don't give a fuck what you guys say about it. I posted a picture of my father who died on July 4th last year. And in that picture, my father had a gun slung around his his shoulder. That's how he lived. That's how he died. He died being a gun owner, loving the outdoors. I'm not talking about him. I'm not talking about you guys that love to hunt. I'm talking about you guys that want to have the human killing machines on deck, on standby. And then simply vanish when you're needed to save the people that your guns are supposed to save. Parkland, Uvalde, all of you. Punks. And I have to pretend like it's not happening to keep civility. No more fake civility. No more fake understanding. No more both sides in it. If we don't wrestle the country back from you people, we will descend into abject chaos. We are already there. You have to be defeated. Sick of it. All right. Um, Fucking dealing with this shit is a lot. Good news. Disney launches Howard University Fund to support black storytellers. Howard, 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 Howard. Yeah. This is a gr- this is great. I'm a I'm, it's a hating ass episode today. <laughs> Partner with Howard University to help advance opportunities for underrepresented students in the media and the opportunity initiative. Disney Storytellers Fund at Howard was announced by the Walt Disney Company on Sunday at the Essence Festival. Shout out to Howard, man. Shout out to Puff. Shout out to Chadwick Boseman. Shout out to Kamala Harris. Shout out to the amazing uh, alumni base of Howard. Howard, 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 (laughs) Howard. Shout out to Howard. It's more HBCUs, man. That was my first thought when I saw the story. That's all I could think about. Listen, hopefully they started with Howard. How it, all things seem to go through Howard first or Morehouse Spellman. Listen, maybe this is a program they're going to implement. I'm trying to I'm trying to be positive right now because there doesn't seem there's there's not a lot of positivity on the podcast today. Um, maybe this is a program that they will implement throughout other HBCUs. I don't know, but my thought was your thought. It would be nice to see y'all focus on another HBCU that doesn't have as big of a like support system or following or endowment like Howard. And honestly, well, let me not say that. I was going to be like, they, they can't even house their residents. Do they fucking deserve this? Give it to somebody else. Controversial Howard Dean, Dean of the Chadwick A. Bozeman College of Fine Arts. <laughs> Howard it. That's how you go to him too, sir. That's who she is. <laughs> Noted Bill Cosby supporter Felicia Rashad added in a statement. Our students at the College of Fine Arts and their creative find their creative expression in many ways. In the performing arts and animation and the design of the products that we use in life. The Disney Storytellers Fund is great support for our emerging artists as they explore and develop 
potential within and across disciplines. Howard, Morehouse, and Spelman are the Tupac of HBCUs. You ask a white person who their favorite rapper is, and they tell you how much they love Tupac. <laughs> They're not going to say Drake because that doesn't mean that they really listen to, to 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 rap, right? Everybody knows Drake. They're not going to say Drake, okay? They're going to say Tupac, who is an extremely legendary rapper, but so revolutionary that if you say that you love him, we're going to be like, oh, shit. We don't even, we're blown away by the fact that that's an easy answer. Spellman, Morehouse, and Howard are amazing A1 institutions, <laughs> bar none. So thankful to the minds that Spillman, Morehouse, and Howard have put into this world, man. The Bakari Sellers, the Jabril Jacksons, all of these people that come out of these places, man. Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson, all of these places. Come on, man. Howard, Morehouse, Spillman, amazing. We got other rappers, man. <laughs> it's true. You know what I'm saying? It's true. It's true. It's true. 20, 21 Savage need a grant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got other rappers, bro. Lotto needs a grant. You know what I mean? Like, like we we got other rappers, man. Schools need. I went to Southern. I went. I was. I was at the. I was at Howard dealing with the kids. Kids at Howard, fucking brilliant, brilliant kids at Howard, brilliant. I'm so blown away. I'm not saying that they have enough. I'm saying that God damn it, try some other places. <laughs> I'm talking. I'm calling call up Disney. Call up Disney. All right, Donnie. I need it. It's time for uh oh maybe Warner Brothers maybe Warner Brothers will do Hampton next. Donnie, what the fuck is that supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? There's Donnie? other production companies too. There's other HBCUs. There's other production companies. Let's like spread yeah. that. Right. It doesn't have to be Disney. I got you, Donnie. I follow. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, Rachel. I, I know, I know that it doesn't have to be Disney, but what I'm saying is now the only thing that's gonna happen is Warner Brothers is going to go to Howard too. Well, Howard, Morehouse, no. Spelman, Warner Brothers. Look, it's okay. All right. Rachel, what do you know about it? What do you know about the plight of the HBCU? Rachel, what do you know about it? God damn it. Excuse your 50, me. Your $50 billion school. Donnie, Excuse look up the endowment me. for Texas. My sister went to Spelman. My sister went to Spelman, so I spent a good amount of time there. Tupac. Don't act like I don't know anything about HBCUs. I know you know. I'm just angry. I'm so angry. I'm angry, but I'm feeling mischievous. I want to start. I want to start making people's lives hard. I like. You know what I want to do? I want to like. I don't want to hurt anyone, but like I want to like. I want to slit Brett Kavanaugh's tires. I do. I want the him fact to that you're going tire. to Texas this week. Is like concerning. I feel like you're gonna be even more enraged by the next time we, we podcast. Hey, I'm actually concerned. Hey man, don't fuck with me, man. I'm not having to like, hey, nigga, I'm mm -hmm. on edge. They better not fuck. Don't fuck with me, man. Shit is tough. I'm sick of it. Like, it, it's, I don't want to hear it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we got some. It's a crazy laugh. Y'all, it's, it's not okay. I'm fucking in my crazy, wits in. I'm like, that was a crazy laugh. And we got more dick riding. Donnie, give it to me. Rise dicks. Rise dick. Rise dick. Rise dick. Rise dick. Rise dick. Don't stop. Yeah. All right, Saturday, the news broke that fake Drake has been banned from Instagram for impersonating Drake. Fake Drake's IZ account, Izzy Drake, has been deactivated. Fake Drake is over. You guys don't I, know who I, this person is. You didn't know. I didn't. I didn't even know he started. You said he's over. I didn't know. I had never heard of Fake Drake. Didn't know anything about him. And when I saw this, I got to be honest with you. He don't look like Drake to me. I would not be fooled. You can grow the beard. You can wear the OVO. You can put the heart in your head. He don't look like Drake. So apparently, this guy has been. Pay five thousand for event <laughs> walkthroughs. 
People DM me like, hey, you want to come to my event because I can't pay Drake? He's yeah. too expensive. He explained <laughs> on the No Jumper podcast. I'll pay you 5000 5000 just to show up. They pay my Airbnb. They pay the flight. They hook it all up. $10,000 for club appearances. Fake Drake recently said that he wants to box the actual Drake for $1 million. Except for August 27th. The Drake imposter agreed to stop impersonating the six god if he loses the fight. This is where the dick riding comes in. Now you're going too far. There's nothing wrong with being a lookalike. There have been lookalikes forever. I enjoy some lookalikes. The guy who acts like he's Tom Cruise on Hollywood Boulevard is fucking amazing. That guy looks exactly like Tom Cruise. It's just crazy. like him. Just like him. Just, it's it's uh, it's like it, it's I like that guy, <laughs> but. See if this motherfucker starts trying to fight Tom Cruise and like he's getting in Tom Cruise's life. It's too much now. All it right. Went to his the head. reality is it, fake Drake, it went to his head. I'll tell you what head it went to. Went to the head of Drake's dick because that's where he's at. He's on his nuts. Get off Drake's dick. All right. Had you heard of him head. before? He went to Drake's head. Yeah, of course. Oh. There was a fake Drake. There was a fake little dirt. The fake little dirt got into a situation <laughs> with. Takashi 69, Takashi 69 <laughs> pressed the fake little dirt. This is how crazy shit is. What did, like the the Takashi 69 pressed the fake little dirt. It was a whole fucking thing on the internet to where he's got beef with the actual little dirt. So he pressed the fake little dirt. What the fuck is happening? Do you remember 22 Savage? Yes, of course. He was from Baton Rouge. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Put Baton Rouge on the map. I love the thing, 22 I like the, Savage. I like 22 Savage, bro. I'm not going 22 I Savage is like, because like his real name, he's like a comedian and stuff. Like, But he just like, I'm not 21 Savage. I'm 22. He's just adding one. <laughs> I just love it. Fake Drake, stop dick riding, bro. Stop fucking dick riding. If you want to go out and make a little change, pretending like, that's cool, bro. Take some pictures of Drake. Try to fight the man for a million dollars. Now you're on his nuts. I on his dick. I'll fight you. I'll fight you for the million. I'll fight him for the million dollars. Well, what I'll would the odds be? What dollars. would the odds? Uh, you oh, you gonna step in for Drake? I will step in for Drake. So now, you gonna give him? A, you gonna game. give him a mil? Yeah, I like. I, no, I don't have the million dollars. But like, <laughs> you know, I actually do have it. But no, no. But but like, but okay, but, okay. But, oh, but, <laughs> but uh, but Donnie played it. Now I'm on Drake's dick. Donnie played it again. Right stick. Don't stop. Yes, Rachel, would you get off your plane for ten thousand dollars? Yes. Cause unlike Delta you, Airlines. I don't have a million dollars. Nah, nigga, you got the house. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just, unlike you. <laughs> uh in his tech columnist, Jason A. Aiton. That was a terrible introduction right there. Uh, it says that there's a Delta Airlines flight to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Passengers on the oversold flight were offered ten thousand dollars in cash. God damn! To give up their seats. The question is this: They say if you have Apple Pay, well, you'll even have the money right now. The question is this: What could you be traveling to that you would not take the ten thousand uh. dollars to get off the flight? A wedding. Uh, oh, oh, wait. It depends whose wedding it is. Nigga, you, you no, no, no. If it was crazy. like my sister's wedding or something like that, that would be different. If it was a funeral, I wouldn't take it. Um, I'm trying to think what else. If I was going to okay. something where I was going to make more money than 10000 I wouldn't take it. That's the only thing. No. You hit the nail on the head. I'd have to be making more than $10,000 where I'm going not to take it. Because here's the thing. If I'm going to a funeral, I'm going to tell hey, yo. I can't make it. You're not. I'm going to be a couple hours late. I can't be there for the repass. No, it's not a couple of hours late. You would miss the 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 thing is 
The hypothetical is you would miss completely whatever it is you're going through, too. So, around this time last year, I was preparing the funeral. And the only thing that could have brought my dad back to life was if I didn't get off of a plane for $10,000 to come to his funeral. Because if I don't take the ten grand, he is getting up out of that casket <laughs> and whooping my ass with the belt. <laughs> it would be honoring him to take the ten thousand bucks. Either that, or I'll call him and be like, "Yo, y'all gotta hold the funeral up." Okay, I got ten thousand. Boom, that shit cost me ten thousand. So, 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 like, the, the, like, the, like the the reality is, I'm taking the ten grand. If I had a job interview. I wouldn't want to work for a place that wasn't on board with me taking the 10000 to get off the plane. If I can't explain that to them, that it was ten grand, and for them to be like, yeah, I wouldn't want to work for them. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I get nothing it. More. I can't be like what you said was what I came to. It'd have to be more than 10000 on the other end of it. But here's the thing, in this story, apparently people were not taking the bait. I don't know who was on that flight, but. Well, some some people said they had sick relatives and stuff. That's another one. If it was somebody that it might be my last time to see them, I could Correct. see that. 10,000 though, it's, it's bad in these guys. Is there one place where it's not bad? So let, let, let's, let's think about this. So it's bad to, to travel. Right? Mm -hmm. It's bad. Traveling is bad. It's not great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's bad at the gas pump. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's bad at parades. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's bad at the movie theater. Not a lot of great films out. It's bad... At concerts. At concerts. It's bad. Like, is there one place where it's not bad? And if... The higher learning question of the week. Is there one place where it's not bad? And if it's not, don't say it publicly. Email me. Because as soon as you say it publicly, it's going to get bad. Correct. It's bad in fucking Russia. Brittany Griner. Home. <laughs> Nigga! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I will blame you if you mess up my piece by saying that out loud. Okay, Brittany. Brit Brittany Griner, handwritten letter to the White House pleading that President Joe Biden not forget about her as she nears almost five months in jail behind bars in Russia. As I sit here in a Russian prison, along with my thoughts and without the protection of my wife, family, friends, Olympic jersey, or any accomplishments, I'm terrified I might be here forever. <sighs> I realize you are dealing with so much, but please don't forget about me and other American detainees. Please do all you can to bring us home. I voted for the first time in 2020 and I voted for you. I believe in you. I still have so much uh, good to do with my freedom. Uh, that you can help restore. I miss my wife. I miss my family. I miss my teammates. It kills me to know they are suffering so much right now. She concluded, I am grateful for whatever you can do at the moment to get me home. Uh, your thoughts? Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. And I think one of the most heartbreaking parts of that letter is that she's saying, I voted for the first time in 2020 and I voted for you. Do something, basically. And I like that. I don't know why that one stood out. That line stood out to me the most because she seems, she seems not seems she is there are pictures that popped up of her um, in court for the first time. It's the first time we've seen her since she's been detained and she's desperate. She's, she's terrified. You can feel that in the letter as she's writing it. Um, and I think it is easy to focus on all the other things that are happening in the world and forget that one of our citizens is being detained for a ridiculous reason. And how many years are they talking? How many years are they talking with her? Year, it don't matter, it's, it's like years. 
And it's been five months since she's been over there and there seems to be absolutely no progress. And even her wife is making a plea. And she said, I'm sick of tired of hearing about how they care. I'm trying to figure out if he cares in reference to the president of the United States. That's what Brittany's wife said. So I hope that this letter gets not just his attention, but gets him to actually do something to bring her home. And and others, because Brittany doesn't just make it about her. I think she says detainees. So all the American citizens home. So let's have a conversation about this. And let's have a conversation about strategy as it relates to us being here on higher learning. Um, I'm going to take some ownership of something real quick. Taking the ownership of the fact that I don't like the Democrats. I don't. It's not, it's not that I don't like the Democrats. It's that I don't like politicians, period, anymore. I'm to that point in life. Yeah. You, you know, know. I used to be. I, was, I don't like politicians. I don't like them. I love activists and give them tons of grace. But politicians, not so much. I think sometimes the fact that I don't love politician, the politicians, it colors my analysis of political things. Okay. Because some of the animus that I might have for politicians bleeds over into the way I look at what could or could not be being done by a politician. And because of that, I'm going to be very strategic in my criticism. Okay, um, politicians need to be a little bit more pointed in what it is that they do, uh, and their messaging needs to be a little bit more direct. But I also need to be a little bit more direct, and manicured, and focused in my criticism, and not criticize in wide blanket, non-useful, or hyperbolic ways. I need to talk about specific things. And this is kind of an example of one of them. Uh, getting Brittany Griner out of prison is a very complicated thing. Sure. She's under the, she's under the, uh, she's under the, I guess the, uh, the thumb, if you will, or she's being held by a different justice system. The reality is they do not have to let her go. Correct. So, and if someone were to come here to America, and run afoul of the law in whatever way, whether that law was fair or foul, they would not have to be let go, you know, by, but at the compulsion of a, uh, of a, of a, of a foreign justice system or a foreign, um, a foreign administration. So the question in this particular Brittany Griner situation is what should we be pressuring the White House to do? Something I don't think is enough because if there is a deal to be made, a prisoner for a prisoner swap, things like that have happened in the past. Uh, if there is uh, talks to be had if all of this stuff is going to be used as leverage in what's going on between Russia and Ukraine then the question is what is it because if we're going to get Brittany out simply shouting at the White House saying do something is uh, is in my opinion a waste of time only because of the fact and I'm, I'm, and I'm looking this uh, this actually started with me diving a little bit deeper into what what happened with um with Roe and figuring out how we can mobilize and leverage what it is that we need to be done. I'm not saying it's our job to figure out what needs to be done, mm -hmm. but it, I think we do bear a responsibility to maybe have a little bit more of an understanding in this situation so that we're not simply throwing out a whole lot of blame in a case where nothing might actually be able to be done. So, so that, I guess that's my thing. So the only thing I'll disagree with on that is I think this is different from Roe. When you say 
we're looking at the administration and we're like, do something. I think that's because I don't even know how to be strategic and what to ask for. I am unfamiliar in that with, with foreign relation. And when we, they, they're detaining one of our citizens in a different country. And I know, like you said, every, every country is different. I don't know what it takes. I know that it's been done before. I don't know. So all I can say to an administration is, you know, you have the power to at least try to do something. I don't know specifically what to tell you to do. Just we see somebody out there who's pleading to be brought home for a very small charge and it seems ridiculous that she's still being over there. And I'm not saying that it's not difficult to bring her home, but in regards to what you're saying, I don't know what to tell them to do other than get her home, do something, or at least try. Do you think, let me ask you this, if they are trying, if they are trying, do you think that they should be telling us that they are? Obviously, they couldn't get into the specifics of how they're doing it, but do you think that they need to be more forthcoming with the public to at least give the appearance that they are actually doing something. Because according Brittany's letter makes it seem like, and I feel like this isn't the first time we've heard from her, makes it seem like they're not. Um, maybe. <laughs> because look, Getting, like, getting Brittany Griner home is, uh, um, is a great PR thing, right? And maybe there are ways to do that that are less than scrupulous. Um, and they have to get down and dirty and do those things. I think it needs to be something that we know that they care about. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think having an educated populace on it is probably the most important thing. Um, so messaging what it is that they can and cannot do is probably helpful. But at the same time, there have been some criticisms levied here, even by the soulless jackals, um, that perhaps a better understanding of these things is apropos if you're going to be outraged at them, right? So for me, I think I've taken some time to think and there are a lot of things that I know, a lot of things that I delve deeply into. And because of that, I understand what I feel like should be happening. The question is, if my criticism was more specific, might the results then be more specific? If I was, if I told you right now, Rachel, I'm hungry, do something to feed me, right? And then you're like, okay. And you brought me out some because cereal. Because I would have the power to do that. Right. But if you brought me out some cereal and I was told you, I don't want this. I need, I need, I need protein. Like I need to be able to tell you specifically how to like, meet my needs for me to be able to specifically know whether or not you're not doing it for some odd reason. And so I'm not saying that this is necessarily every American's job, but I am saying I do think it's my job sitting in front of the microphone. I do understand and accept that criticism. I do think that it's my job. And in the case of Brittany Griner, I read the letter and obviously she can't say this, but what I need to look at is what specifically can they do to get her out that they're not doing? Like what, like what, like what can they do to get her out that they're not doing? Because the reality is, and if if there's nothing that they can do, and there might be nothing there might that they be. can do to get her out, there might be, then it's not their fault that Brittany Griner, I mean, just to be honest with you, it's not their fault that Brittany Griner got arrested and detained in Russia. So, so, totally so like what that. I'm saying is, what I'm saying is I do think that this is an opportunity for the administration and what's happening over there is completely fucked up. But I need to know how they're failing. 
And I need to do that work because it's obviously not going to be able to come from Britney from jail in Russia. And what's happening to her is totally fucked up. But it's really not the Biden administration's fault, if I'm being honest with you. It's like it's, I don't it's, think anybody's it's saying a, that. Right. I, I, yeah. But they're not saying that. But there's an implication that if they can't solve the problem, that it's in some way a failing. And I want to know if in order for that to be true, I need to know how you would solve that problem. You know, but, like but, what but like, are you asking people to do something that they have no power to do? Like that's why I said when you gave me the example about the cook, like I'm hungry. What are you gonna do about it? I have the power to feed you. But with with the Britney situation, you're asking people to do like to be more specific or strategic or, you know, like strap themselves with, I guess, the knowledge of what the administration can do, even if they do that, they're still not going to have the power to get it done. I know, but that's my point, though. My point is, if you don't have, if I'm asking you to feed me a steak because I need protein and you don't have any steak, then it's a dub, right? So, so, so my, my, my point is in, in this particular situation, the We Are Britney shirts are great. All the awareness is great. When we find somebody to blame, we need to know what we're blaming them for. Totally and agree. Blaming them for not not being able to get Britney out is that's that's too wide of a net to me. I agree. Like like we we need to hear. We ask the president to do this. We ask him to talk to this person. We ask him to call this person. We ask him to hold this. We ask him to do that, and they and they refuse to do it. And then we need to hear from the White House from why. And I think that going forward, I don't think it's a bad idea to be able to, to do all of this stuff to to be able to have that conversation. Um, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm jaded. Who knows? Maybe the soulless jackals have finally got We're all got jaded. Yeah. All right, Chris Broussard. It's talking about Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, we don't know where he's going to go. Have you been following the Kevin Durant saga? Oh, well, yeah, we don't know where he's going to go. I'm following it loosely. You guys talk you guys talk about it at all? Did he uh, That's your boy. Your did you did you talk about it? No, nah, did you talk about it? Nope. I think you know him a little bit better than I do. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. But there were some people um, at the party last night I could ask. <laughs> oh, so Rachel, you got it. Rachel, do you ever want to get the scoop? No, I just like to have a good time. <laughs> I'm bad at you my like job. Get, <laughs> I want to call. I want to. I want to call you, Rachel Scoop Lindsay. <gasps> Scoop. Why are you excited about this? I'm not giving you any scoop, though. I'm so excited about Rachel Scoop Lindsay. Rachel, we got to have, because you, you're you so many places mixing it up with the movers and the shake eyes. That's we gotta you, have not me. One scoop from Rachel per month. Rachel Scoop Lindsay. I used to get scoops. You don't have any you scoops? Okay, fine. No, nothing. Nothing other than people. That you know there. scoops, man. You're holding back. I can tell right now. You talked. Who are you, who's at the party that you could have talked to about this? Uh who was at the party? Which basketball players were there that I even remember mm-hmm. seeing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tristan Thompson. <laughs> oh wow. No, don't touch me. Rudy Gobert. Oh, Right, Ru- right, Russell, right. Russell was there. <laughs> no, you're not gonna. You're not gonna get. You know, you name three Just, niggas is not gonna give you any scoops. I know. <laughs> you're like, you're like, you're like, you're like, you're like, you name three niggas <laughs> that have no scoops for you. Tristan I Thompson have, will no. sooner give you a kid than a scoop. <laughs> Rudy Gobert will sooner give you COVID than a scoop. And Russell Westbrook got a lot of Self explanatory. Yeah. <laughs> Self explanatory. Get no That's scoops funny. for the news. Yeah. Oh. All right. Um, so we don't know, but Fox Sports pundit, Chris Broussard. I call him Red Broussard. Oh, wait, hey, DeAndre Jordan's here. I, things are coming DeAndre back Jordan. to me from that party. That was the that's the closest I could get to it to him. It's the DeAndre. Okay, Chris Broussard. Had, go ahead. Chris Broussard is talking about the possibility that Kevin Durant, KD, the Slam Reefer, might end up in uh, 
in Toronto. And then he <laughs> he let go with this salvo about Toronto. Great city, but Twan, you know it's not America and you feel it when you're there. I'm telling you, especially as an African American, it's a different situation than African Americans are used to being in. And they've all I've talked to people in that organization pre Ujiri about can they keep African American superstars there? This had <laughs> my Toronto homies in the blender. <laughs> like my friend Marlon Palmer, who we've had on this very podcast, Marlon Palmer, Bunna Boy on Twitter, who we've had on this dude, that dude McFly, who we've had on this very podcast, my homie, my friend leapt into the diaspora wars as triggered by this particular statement. That's what Marlon had to say. In a since deleted tweet. The heat was too much for Marlon. Marlon's a great guy. But I don't forget. He said, American black people act like their lived experience is so different from every other black person on the planet. Y'all not special. We all oppressed, laughing my ass off with one, two, three, four, five, six O's. Now, Chris Broussard has since challenged this backlash. He's come back and says, I never said that black blacks are treated worse in Toronto than in America. Never. That's ridiculous. I said, living there is very different and not the same as living in America for blacks. Very diverse city, but just 8% black. I love vi visiting Toronto. Visiting. So two things are correct here. One is Chris Broussard is completely out of his depth, as far as I'm concerned, talking about what is it, what it's like living as a black American in Toronto if he's never lived as a black American <laughs> in Toronto. <laughs> Now, you might have heard it from a bunch of people, which I'm sure he has. And I'm not saying that what he's saying. He didn't even say that. What? That he's heard it from a bunch of people. He was talking like it was well, first-hand experience. He, he did say that. He said that. In the, the clip is a little longer. He says he's heard. He's talked to a, some players, right? He says he's talked to some players. Uh -huh. Right? So he talked to some players. So if he has never lived in Toronto as a black person, he can't tell us what it's like to live in Toronto as black. I'm sorry. He can't do that, Chris. Chris, you can't do that. You, you, you can't do that. You can't do that, Chris. And it did seem like he was coming at the Toronto, uh, the my Toronto people, my Raptors fans who, of course, love me. But at the same time, I will say this. Number one, places are different culturally. And I don't know if Chris Broussard knows this, but you might go to Toronto, which is a foreign country, right? It's Canada is not America and be like, yo, there are certain things about being in America that I miss. You might feel that way about going from New York to L.A. People say New York to L.A. I can't fucking fuck with L.A. So obviously, if you leave America and go to a foreign country as a black American, you might have trouble connecting to the culture there. Because even though it's black culture and culture of the diaspora, it is different. So that's not a controversial thing to say that there are some black players that might not want to live in Canada that's not a controversial thing to say, all right? What I do have a problem with overall, though, is this. I am sick and fucking tired of other parts of the diaspora, immigrants from other places here that look for any reason possible to shit on black Americans. Yeah. I am sick of this shit. What the fuck, man? We've had a bunch of different times. Academics did an interview. Well, shout out to Ac. Academics did an interview where in this interview, he talked about what it was like being an immigrant and what the mentality of the black American kids was here when he got here. We had Garcelle Beauvais on this show. Love Garcelle Beauvais. Love her. But she talked about in a slightly, in my opinion, loved her. We discussed it when she was here. Slightly pejorative way about what the black kids were going through here and how 
an immigrant uh, an immigrant experience changed it. And now we have well, we always have, of course, people outside of the country, people outside of America saying these same things about black Americans. And I got I got to be real with you, man. Like I get that everyone has a specific tie and reverence and love for their culture. And I get that black Americans are not the best at sometimes being welcoming. You know, I won't even say that because I haven't really experienced that. I'm saying that I've heard from people that sometimes black Americans can be, there was the African booty scratcher thing back in the day, right? Sometimes it's it's, it's whatever. But to me, to to be honest, I'm going to be real with you. All I see as is black Americans here in this country being on the forefront of global trends of music, art, and culture that makes a global connection throughout the diaspora of being people who have birthed some of the leaders who, like, more than anyone, anyone been responsible for the consciousness of, of, of Pan-Africanism, of understanding, even in being disconnected from a continent that is rightfully ours in terms of our birthright and who we are and where we come from. I've seen black Americans want to have a connection to black people everywhere. That's what I've seen. And I've seen our music and our culture being being embraced everywhere. And I've seen a oneness by that. I've seen, to be honest with you, an emulation of black culture here in America, black American culture here in America, everywhere. I think it's beautiful when it happens. And I think it's beautiful when we emulate black people from Toronto, from the islands, from Africa, from anywhere that black people are, I think the oneness of that is amazing. But I'm not about to get kicked in my ass worldwide by by black people from everywhere else that feel like the niggas from here are the dog shit. So like, I'll never go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I I mean all very well said. I never had experienced that until I went to college. And I realized that there was a separation between that, like almost as if a talking down to, or they felt like they were better than us, like coming from a different, a different country, a different other place. And, um, then this, oh wait, you froze for a second. Then the States, I had never experienced that. And in talking to people from different countries, from Africa or black people from Africa or from the islands, I have been told, at least it's been my experience, that they are taught that we're, that they're, I don't want to say better than us, but like they work harder, that they, like they appreciate and value things better than black Americans do here, which is why they differentiate themselves. I have been told that from various people. I don't know if you've experienced that. So like when you, I agree with every single thing that you said, but I'm not shocked by it after I learn that a lot of them when they come here look down on us because that is what they've been taught. And it's a mindset that they still continue to carry. And I'm shocked by that because I've never, I had never experienced that since college and I've seen it since, since college too. Let me ask you a question. What if that were true? I'm not saying that it is, but let's say it was true. Let's Mm -hmm. say it was true that, for some reason, immigrant groups or people from all over the diaspora have a different appreciation and value for American freedom and opportunity when they come to America, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say that that were true. Mm -hmm. Can you give me any maybe obvious reasons why that would exist? Does it take that much brain power (laughs) to understand why a second or third generation of American oppression and fascism, to be honest with you, would have a different outlook on their country than somebody who really just got here? And if that's the case, why on God's green earth would you blame the people that have been there for that and not the systems that designate those attitudes. Very true. Do you even understand what it is that we're talking about? So what I'm saying is from the Chris Bruce Starr statement to Marlon's statement, Marlon, who I love, who's a very funny guy, who has a great podcast 
on his on, on his own. You should go listen to Marlon's podcast. I'm going to plug it right now. I think it's called We Hate Black People. No, it's called uh, it's the Extra <laughs> Gravy Show. It's the Extra Gravy Show. Uh, it's the name of, uh, of 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 Marlon's podcast. You should go check Marlon out. Marlon is great, but th- th- this is not constructive. And not the diaspora all. wars that we have, they are not constructive, and they're not constructive when we do it as Black Americans. No, like we're black. Why do we keep trying to make this false false hierarchy inside of our own diaspora? We're black. And we need to work in unison. And even if we can't work in unison, even if that's pie in the sky, don't kick each other in the nuts. Yeah. yeah. Sick of it. The my black is better than your black is never good for us. Stop. Stop. I know you you don't you definitely don't like that. <laughs> you hate it. We've see, we've had that between us even. We've had that between us even. We've had that between yeah. us. We have. All right. Arrest warrant issued, excuse me, arrest warrant for the woman who accused Emmett Till found nearly 70 years later in court basement. Jesus Christ. A team searching the basement of a Mississippi courthouse for evidence about the lynching of black teenager Emmett Till has found an unserved warrant charging a white woman with his 1955 kidnapping. And Till's relatives who initiated the search warrant authorities to finally arrest her nearly 70 years later. The wa- a warrant for the arrest of Caroline Bryant Donham. Uh, Identified as Miss Roy Bryan on the document. It was discovered last week inside a file folder that had been placed in a box. Wow. Um, the restaurant a warrant against Dunham was publicized at the time, but the LaFleur County Sheriff told reporters he did not want to bother the woman since she had young children to care for. Huh. Fuck. Huh. Now in her 80s and most recently living in the North Carol in North Carolina. Dunham has not commented publicly on calls for her prosecution, but cousin Terry Watts said the Till family believes the warrant accusing Dunham of kidnapping amounts to new evidence. This is what the state of Mississippi needs to go ahead. District Attorney Dwayne Richardson, whose office would prosecute a case, declined comment on the warrant, but cited a December report about the Till case from the Justice Department, which said no prosecution was possible it's not going to happen rachel your thoughts listen i mean this is when i when i read this story and i read about the arrest warrant which i never even did you know that that ever existed did you know that there was a warrant out for arrest okay so i i I didn't know if this was something i just missed i had no idea about it when i thought about it i was like it's almost hard for me to even comment about my thoughts other than how ridiculous this story is and the fact that there was this warrant, the fact that she couldn't be bothered because she had two children. Like it this is for the family. This is for Emmett Till's family. And it's like, I just want to respect and do whatever they want to do. So if they feel she should be arrested, she should be arrested now. If they want some kind of statement and they want the process, uh, the process, the DA's office in that county to do something about it, then I'm a hundred percent for it. Um, if this is going to give them some, a, a peace, or if this is going to give them closure, I am a hundred percent behind what the family feels on this one because they are the ones who are directly affected by this. And it's sad that all these years later, they're still having to deal with this and new evidence is coming out in regards to something that was, that was such a tragedy, not just to this nation, but to them specifically, because they're the ones who, you know, obviously um, is personal for them. You want her in jail. If they want her in jail, I want her in jail. Shit. She should have gone to jail back then. Yeah. Lock her up. What am I saying? Put her in jail. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest with you. Like, I don't care if she goes to jail. That's why she I say this is for if the fa- that's why I say it's what the family wants. I she do. Want- she should have gone to jail back then. So it's like that's why I'm just like she's been living. She's been living free, carefree all these years. Lock her up. She finds some way to make herself the victim. She already has. She had children children to care for. She had children to care for. She's in her 80s. You know what that that tells me is that we're inside the lifespan of Emmett Till. 
Emmett Till could and should still be alive today. Mm-hmm. Killed the boy for nothing. Mm-hmm. It's it's like, and this is the problem. Mm-hmm. This goes back to what we were just talking about. We got to deal with all of this. And then we got to deal with criticism from other black people as well. Just getting our asses kicked. I'll tell you what, man. I, I, I know that bl- black people everywhere are oppressed. It's fucking obvious. So I, I, what I want us to do is just please keep our eye on the ball. God damn it. In this particular case, I don't, I, you know, I got to be honest with you. I, I tried to be nice about it. I got to be real. I don't give a fuck if she goes to jail in Siberia for a million years. I think that's where she belongs. I'll be mm-hmm. honest with you. Mm-hmm. I don't fucking care. There's a part of me that goes, old lady, don't put her in jail. What's the point of it? The point of it is a life was lost. I don't even get pure revenge, actually. Not even any justice. Put her in jail right now. Put her in Angola in the men's jail. The boy got, like, he got, he got beat. He got the shit beat out of him for no fucking reason. Put her in the men's jail. Like, I, like, I don't care what happens. Jail, 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 jail. Rachel, this has been a podcast of angst. Okay, this is this is POA podcast of angst is what it's been this entire time. It's been angsty, 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 angsty. All we've had is fucking criticism by black. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot going on. It's like a podcast of angst. We are going to do on Thursday a good news rosy podcast. We're gonna try. Because the shit try. goes down, it might not happen. Thursday, we might do a whole podcast of pleasantries. We might do the whole. It might do. It might all be pleasantries. We might start off with the pleasantries. We first of all, Donnie the Snake Killer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fucking Ice Cube from Anaconda. Donnie, like, like Donnie the Snake, like Donnie the Snake Killer will be back <laughs> with, like, with with an update on what fucking happened to the snake man. Man, uh, free my dog, Snakey, bro. Free my dog. Like, free free my dog, Snakey, no. man. Stop. Okay. He's got a name now. Kill Snakey. it, Donnie. Kill it. Free, free my dog. Take a picture. Send it to Van. No. I'm telling you. Donnie, <laughs> call the wildlife and fisheries. They're going to be so Listen mad at us. <laughs> no, they won't. Call the wildlife and fisheries. Call them, right? You call the wildlife and fisheries. Like they'll come down there and the nigga that comes from the wildlife and fisheries is going to love snakes so much. You're going to have made his day. He's going to be like, where's he at? Where's he at? We caught one over two counties over that was 12 feet. Blah, 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 blah. You never know with these guys. They're wildly. Oh, no. Let me show you. He loves this. He This is what he loves. The There's one guy somewhere that his whole life went, caught snakes. And when he became time an adult, to go. he didn't time know to go. that he could spend his it, whole it life catching snakes, Donnie. Call him. He'll come catch the snake. Don't kill Snakey. Justice for Snakey. We got to go. Take it it is time. Off. He's delirious. Snake, right? He's, he's uh, delirious. Like, like, I, man, I'm, Just, losing I'm losing it. I'm losing it, Rachel. I'm losing it. <laughs> they took their thinking caps off 10 minutes ago. <laughs> they took them off a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Bye, guys. <laughs>